Welcome to America. And more precisely, welcome to the Central Pacific Ocean. We are headed to this little archipelago lost in the middle of nowhere, Hawaii, Uncle Sam's outpost. The most recent of the 50 U.S. states, which joined the Union in 1959. These jolly fellows are students. They're enjoying their last moments of summer freedom before the start of a new school year. Yeah. This island is so beautiful. It is. And you can't get any place better than this. You cannot. Like, that's true. But all you have to do is drink, like, fuck, and go to the beach. I'm just saying. That might be your point. Dr at least I don't Josh, Casey, oh. Mahe, and the others grew right, up together on the beautiful Kauai Island. When you lose. They come from quite different backgrounds, but it's not a problem, especially when everybody feels a little tipsy. Oh, you don't make any cups, you need to sit under the table. That's not bad. Ah, you gotta make one before you go. <laughs> you did that so good, bro. <laughs> Behind the jokes, the alcohol, the innocence, and the bravado, worries loom. We wouldn't imagine that kind of anxiety existed in this part of the world. We might be the greatest like country in the world, but that's just because we're the best at covering it up. That's that's how I feel. We're the best at covering it up. We don't think that this is the greatest country in the world anymore because it's not. The USA is not a good country. There's not much opportunity, and we're in debt. We're just the dollar. The dollar is going down, and yeah, we have. No job opportunities. There's a bunch of poor people. That's correct. And the government can't do anything about it. And the rich people, they, they just ignore it. They ignore the poor people and they're just trying to get richer. And they're part of the government. They're controlling the government. They're above the government because they're so rich. He's a puppet. He's a puppet. No matter who we elect, they're puppets. That's what I think. Our government is fucked. We are going to be the end of the world the USA, and it's scary. After such words, you could expect a lack of conviction, but it's quite the contrary, actually. I, I voted for Obama yeah. the last election now, I'll vote for Obama again. The wealthy should be taxed more because they just make more in a living, you know? They should be able to fuel America because America is like hard class, the middle class workers, that's what it mostly yeah. is. Yeah. So why would you want to tax the hardest workers, you know? Yeah. No, nah, I just, my, my views follow more with the Democratic Party. That's just me, though. Just, we don't want a Mormon as president, you know what I mean? You wanna see we a don't want no suit? Mormon. The most beautiful place in the world? However, here America doesn't make young people dream anymore. Hawaii still votes Democrat, but the enthusiasm for Barack Obama's election seems long gone. The country is still stuck in a crisis which has increased the unemployment rate to 8%, a high rate which was still unthinkable a few years ago. We're in Hanapepe Bay, west of the island, where a traditional culture of salt making is passed from one generation to the next. 70-year-old Ellie doesn't think twice before getting his hands dirty. He meticulously prepares these clay palms from which he'll collect the precious Hawaiian salt. I'm just fortunate that I can get my hands in, in this place here because this Hawaiian salt, you cannot get it any, any place else the way we make it. You get enough. Christmas, you can share with your family and your friends. That's the thing about this. It's a little hard work, but it pays at the end. Ellie isn't so young, and like many Americans, he shores up his mega pension with some work. 
Here, state pension isn't enough to make ends meet. Everyone must find additional income. Fortunately, Ellie can count on his own resources. I would rather do this and hit a little golf ball, and you gotta go find it. <laughs> That's why, if you, even if I'm making twelve dollars an hour, I, I want to hang on to the, the job. It's gonna last you a long lifetime. All this time, it was the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That's the only way I can put it. <laughs> President Obama, at least he's, he's, he's working for the uh, middle class, the poor people. He's trying to get people jobs. You want, you want a president like that, push the bill through, you know, stuff like that. Now they're fighting for Social Security, all these little small kind of benefits when we get our, you know, old age. I mean, if we lose, we lose Social Security and stuff like that. We don't have, at the end, we don't have nothing to bounce back on. We might as well go sleep on the beach. You cannot see into the future, but we get, we get in there. Here, Obama doesn't have to convince people of his actions in favor of the most underprivileged. In Hawaii, everybody knows where he comes from. He was born nearby in Honolulu, and he was raised in a modest family, sometimes by his single mother, sometimes by his grandparents. Going up the valley, we make an unexpected encounter with Paola, 13th child in a family of 16 brothers and sisters. This colorful character has always lived on the family domain, in the middle of orchards surrounded by domestic animals. Hey, leave him alone. Kill, kill. Watch out, they love money, you know. They, they love marijuana. If you have any in your pocket, they, they're gonna eat it. Um, my name is Paola. Um, I'm a native of Kauai. I've been born and raised in in this beautiful valley of Wainiha. Um, at this time and moment, I'm not doing anything yet. Um, Eddie, come on, Eddie, come on. Okay, Eddie, I'm gonna get the hose and I'm gonna shoot you up, you know. I'm gonna shoot you, that's it. That's it, I cannot. You gotta go down the hill, down the hill, all the way down the hill, all the way, all the way. Everybody wants us to be American. Everybody wants us to do the American way. What is the American way? It's a young country. It's not as old as my heritage, my culture. My culture is old. It goes back beyond the ages of ages. The United States Marines um, held our queen hostage in her own palace for 90 days. And she died in her room. You know. When was that? That was in 1891, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, she was our last queen. Then after that, everything just went downhill for my culture. You know, so America the beautiful. Now it's time for them to do what is right, and it did, and, and and it's the people who we elect in the office. Yeah. So. Elect the right ones. We need the right ones. I'm voting for Obama because I feel that he has something to offer to the people. Well, I wish, you know, that he is carrying something from here to there and making it, you know, um, making it happen, you know. Um, I hope he has um, care in his heart and love in his heart because that's what this place is about. They, they ain't gonna get him out, they're not. Not with, with uh, people from Hawaii, you know, not with us. We're gonna help him. Hey. Bye, aloha. Bye. Bye.
where the world is going to, my friend. We don't know where the world is going to, but all we know is that we won't come back. When you step into that voting booth, the choice you make in that one instant is going to shape your country and your world for decades to come. I know that's a pretty heavy idea to lay on you on a Tuesday, but it's true. The job of government is to protect the freedoms of the people so they can build a brighter life for themselves and for their communities. This is a nation that celebrates individual initiative, people seeking greatness, people who have dreams. We're heading to Oahu, Hawaii's main island, where most of the population lives. As soon as we arrive in downtown Honolulu, a small group of protesters, discreet yet resolute, draws our attention. It seems as though it's not necessarily better being poor in a sunny city. On November 6th, on the election, I am going to protest and say that no representatives are ever going to represent you, that we need to stop with uh, representational politics. Be the change you want to see in the world, instead of vote for it. Jake has chosen to support the cause of the Occupy Wall Street movement. This nonviolent protest movement, which has made headlines, started in New York City in September 2011, and it mainly takes aim at financial capitalism. Since then, the Occupy movement has spread throughout the continent, but also in Hawaii. It's even the oldest uninterrupted chapter of the organization. And contrary to what one might think, the movement has not only convinced young idealists. We don't have an election in the USA anymore. We have a selection process. I mean, you got more toothpaste in the store to choose from than you do politicians in this country. And why is that? We should have 35 po people running for president, okay? At least. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I served this country. I saw a lie in Vietnam. They were lying about Vietnam. Uh, we should have never taken it over from the French as we did, okay? Dien Bien Phu, why would I want to support a system that is not transparent and tells lies to me? As John Kennedy said, if, 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 if uh, reform becomes impossible, revolution becomes inevitable. We are the Aloha Revolution. It's a revolution, but it's a, a revolution with Aloha. And you can do this around the world if you use Aloha. Is America then ready for a revolution? It's hard to believe when you look at these pictures of the mythical Waikiki Beach. Yet, on the continent, Americans are extremely divided. The political debate between Democrats and Republicans is more violent than ever. Who's to blame? Romney's aggressiveness? Obama's origins? This Hawaiian tour operator has developed the habit of stopping off at this ice cream parlor. This is where Barack Obama got his first job. And for Quona, a local guide, it's a good reason to organize a one-of-a-kind pilgrimage. And now what? He's the president. So what? What he tells you? Huh? It's hope for everybody. <laughs> Maybe one day I can quit driving the tour. You vote for me? <laughs> Being that he is our president, and you know, we like to show that this is where he worked and stuff. He's just an ordinary Joe, just like you and I, you know? You know? And that makes it, makes it, to me, it makes it more personable. You know, that he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth, so, you know, he came up the hard way like everybody else, so it's all good. Yeah. I hope people can see it that way, you know? He, he had a rough life, and he made himself it just shows you, in America, you can be anything you want. That's all it is. Thanks a lot. Okay, all right. Just a few steps from here is the prestigious Punahou School, which young Barack attended on scholarship for high school. Obama was raised in a reconstituted family, sometimes by his grandparents, 
sometimes by his mother who traveled a lot. Here's a rare encounter with his half-sister, Maya Sutaro, who now lives in Hawaii and teaches at university. Born in Indonesia, she grew up with Barack during four years in Jakarta. I do think just on a very personal and intimate level, my brother has something that no other president has really had. And he certainly, I think, learned a lot about um, poverty and developed an understanding of the world um, that was multifaceted and layered from that time. Uh, he could see that there was a lot of beauty that resided beneath the poverty and I think that's an expectation that is um, new and a way of looking at the world that is perhaps um, a little different than, than prior presidents. Not everyone is ready for this new way of looking at the world, especially those who think that Barack Obama was not born in the United States. A year ago, the president has published his birth certificate, yet one American out of four still believes he was born in a foreign country. It's a twisted way of saying that the first black president is not a real American. Of course I'm disappointed, I mean I find it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes we need a sense of humor uh, precisely when things make you cry <laughs> because you know you have to have you have to be resilient and he is he has steeled himself but I think you know nobody quite expected the resistance that he encountered I think that there are quiet revolutions and um, again I think that um, that he has worked very hard and that progress has been steady meaningful um, and powerful, and, and the repercussions will be deep. We leave this little paradise fervently in support of Barack Obama. We are now headed to the Rocky Mountains of Utah, out west. A striking contrast. Utah has been the sanctuary of the Mormon community for over a century now. Mormons represent 60% of the state population. This branch of Christianity was considered a sect in the United States for a long time, but now it's starting to find its place in the multicultural mosaic of America. Since Mitt Romney, one of its most famous followers, became White House candidate, the community, rather discreet until then, suddenly burst into the limelight. Sunday morning in the Mormon Church of Midvale. Contrary to Amish people, Mormons have no problem with the use of electric power and modern technology. Since the late 19th century, the Latter-day Saint Church no longer tolerates polygamy. However, Mormons aren't allowed to smoke tobacco or drink alcohol and coffee, which are believed to interfere with spiritual growth. Last but not least, each member must donate 10% of their income to church. Obviously, as far as singing is concerned, Don hasn't been touched by God's grace. But Don and his wife, Jerry, wouldn't miss service for anything in the world. Since 1978, African Americans are allowed to hold the priesthood. And as high priest of the church, Don ends the service with a closing prayer. We ask that thy spirit would continue to be with us as we go throughout this day. The end of service is an opportunity for Don to greet other members and to verify the intensity of their faith. He is eager to introduce us to Steve, who after several years of absence has just returned to church. 
I've been raised Mormon all my life, but I rebelled for the first 45 years, and then all of a sudden the light came, on. came, came to me due to a series of circumstances that should have taken my life. I finally realized the Lord has something in store for me. He wants me around to do something. And I think I just found out what it is. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. That's an excellent point. Are you members of the church? No. No. So you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I heard about it, so yeah, I see. <laughs> Don invites us at his home, but once we arrive, we discover that we will not be alone. The church's public relations department has sent a chaperone. Their Harwell family counts four children. The father, Don, is a business executive. His wife, Jerry, is a college history professor and their youngest child, Renee, now 22 years old, has joined the conversation. As a Mormon priesthood holder, we have um, principles, okay? Those principles, in a nutshell, are honesty, integrity, and dealing fairly with our fellow man. And I believe, after meeting Romney, he lives up to those principles. So that also helps me feel better about voting for him. He's a priesthood member. I know he has the same integrity I do. And if he doesn't, it'll come out and it'll burn him. Okay? Don and I uh, strongly disagree. You know, on the individuals, we do. Many people, media included, make us out to be very superficial in how we vote in that they ask, are you going to vote for Obama, President Obama, because he's black, or are you going to vote for Mitt Romney because he's Mormon? Well, I would hope you would, we're a little deeper than that, and that we're looking at issues. My fear with Mitt Romney is he's thinking he's going to run the government like a company. U.S. government is not a company. He's going to run into problems. Renee, does it make a difference uh, for you that Romney is a uh, Mormon? Well, I wasn't going to vote for him in the first place, but I mean, it doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> this cannot get back to public affairs. I don't care what they say. A rather embarrassing situation which puts our chaperone in a very difficult position. And as he knows that Renee has not gone to church for a very long time, he has good reason to worry. I just don't, I don't know if I should say. That's rude. I just didn't like our ward in particular, I guess. You're on film with me. But let's be positive. <laughs> well, they were adults and I was a kid. And I even thought that they were mean then, so that's kind of saying something, right? <laughs> mm. Let's bring the next Do we move? Yeah, can we? <laughs> no, but I can't. Really How did we go there? <laughs> Unfortunately, we live in a country where you get to choose, right? Jesus, yeah. What I'm saying is like parents, most parents don't usually. Especially LDS parents, like a lot of people send their kids off to... Missions? No, not missions, like those crazy camps. Because their oh. kids are like rebellious and don't want to read the Book of Mormon <laughs> at night. Just saying. Being raised in the LDS church and my views on Mormons, I would not want a Mormon running the country. Like I would, it just does not seem appealing to me at all. What they're gonna do, how they act towards me, I would not want to see up there. I guess I would say. And not all of them, but a very great deal of them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I pray for absolution on this one. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to uh, just bring a stranger in off the street next time for a drink <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> you can only raise a child so far, and then you have to let them decide for themselves what they want to do. 
but you can't force that thinking on your child or you end up with a a very rebellious and when they can get away they never come to visit you know i don't particularly like it but i have to respect you know that's how she feels yeah i'm adorable <laughs> where did you get that from who told you that <laughs> i'm the father you're not adorable you're cute <laughs> cute and adorable what just happened either shows that censorship isn't very effective among Mormons or that speaking the truth, even when it comes to religion, is possible at home. This is living proof that even the most conservative churches integrate gradually into American society. Another example of Mormons' entry into modernity, an ecological company close to Salt Lake City. Dan, the owner of this green business that produces compost, has just turned 25. His company is three years old and is valued at $1 million, a true American success. I was at an all-you-can-eat buffet eating all-you-can-eat French toast and I went back for a second plate. The plates in the U.S. are really big and the servings are huge and I have a hard time finishing it. And I wanted to see if there was something that you could do with all of that food waste instead of just throwing it away. You can see this is where all the, the old food from places like grocery stores come in. And this is where we sort through all the food. It comes up here and we grind all of it kind of the, the consistency of mashed potatoes. The compost then heats up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit and it just cooks. So it's almost ready. So once we have the finished compost, we then bag it where it's then sold for people to use in their garden. Business is going really well. So we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We have a responsibility to live in a sustainable way and to, to manage uh, our resources. Let's recap. One, Dan is a green Mormon and lives in a state that votes overwhelmingly Republican. Two, Republicans do not like environmentalists. Conclusion, could we say that Dan is Mormon and a little Democrat around the edges? How open should I be? <laughs> oh, completely. This is France. <laughs> so I was dating this girl that went to BYU. And we were getting serious, so I met her parents. Uh, and her parents pulled me aside and they said, Dan, you know, we really like you, but we have one concern. I said, okay, what is it? They said, well, you drive a Prius and you own a green business. Are you a Democrat? <laughs> As a, a green business owner, I will vote for Mitt Romney. One of our goals with EcoScraps is to show that you can run an environmental business that is profitable and is more profitable because it is sustainable. And as a green business owner, I don't see any contradiction in supporting Mitt Romney. I think by boosting the economy, you then boost all green businesses, allowing them to have a greater environmental impact. The color of money doesn't really matter for this Romney generation. If the business is green and it's profitable, even better. That's two birds with one stone. But for the rest, these new Republicans are still loyal to the fundamentals of candidate Romney. It's all about private initiatives, keep the state out of it. It's based on this conviction that the Founding Fathers signed the Declaration of Independence more than 200 years ago that made this country an exception throughout the world. Cars, stunts, and a captivated audience. The Demolition Derby is an American show for the entire family. Jim Louder is the evening host. Impossible to miss him with his costume in the colors of the flag.
Well, I'm a rancher. We raise beef, and uh, we have a good time doing that. Many other things. But I love the microphone when I'm in an arena most every weekend throughout the summer doing this. This is what I love to do. Done it since I was a sophomore in high school. It started out as a very patriotic person ever since I was a kid, and so I really believe in America and freedom, and that's what it's all based around. Home of the free and the land of the brave. There it is. Jim will vote Republican, it seems to be obvious. So obvious that we almost even forget to ask him. Well, listen to his answer. I'm voting for Obama, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Actually, I would never suspect that you would have been a Democrat in a red state wearing an American flag. That's a big Absolutely, thing. yep. That's my creed. It's what I live by. Power to the people. It'd be nice to see the, the, the middle American make it and be a part of, uh, you know, the, the American dream and, and to let, uh, you know, the lower ends, you know, get a notch up. You know, break down the, make the American dream like it was when Bill Clinton was in office. You know, and I think if we let Obama have four more years, he'll do that for us. He'll get us back to where we were when Clinton left office. He deserves eight years. Let's give it to him. God bless America. God bless the troops. And God bless you, my brother. If I'm in trial where I'm, I, we're getting a shooting or a fight, just stay away from the situation. My primary goal is to keep you guys safe. So with that in mind, let's go check it out. Be aware, I have two riders unarmed and I'm 10 eight. Haram Burnett an officer in the Unified Police of Greater Salt Lake. Born in Mexico, he's lived in the U.S. all his life. He's patrolled this area of Milk Creek for over 20 years. I think I'm gonna pull this guy over on my left. That was local plate, Bravo 344 Tango Fox on a black Acura TL times two. How's it going? Good. You haven't done anything wrong, but just to let you know, your windows are way too dark. There's a lot that uh, does not allow uh, the drivers to have a vehicle where the driver's side door and the passenger are way too dark. And we're here to sustain the law, so make sure everybody follows the law. It's funny because we don't have that kind of law in Europe. And you guys have some laws over there that we don't have here, where it's against the law to own a, a gun. It is. I copy 1534. Over here? No, everybody wants to have one. Well, our constitution says that we have the right to bear arms. And people really take it serious. It, it is also the source of many problems. Correct. I agree with you. You know, it's hard to say because for over 200 years, we all carry guns from the old west to now. When we have those shootings at the school, at the church, or the temple, it becomes a time where people start thinking maybe we should arm ourselves. And this is when the sales of guns 
becomes even greater. This is the house we're going to go to. 44. An individual already known to the local police has just called for help. Apparently, he was the victim of a burglar. Hey, you painted all of them. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So he's retaliating, but I'm pretty sure it's him. How did he get in? He hops his fence, puts his ladder up on there, comes on over, jumps in. Okay. There was another hit. And I mean, I had logs all the way from that dirt pile to my shed, and then they stole half of it. I've lost 15 grand in the last five years. Are you going to put up more fence years. up higher? I'm buying a spool of barbed wire. I'm going to trap it, so when he gets caught, he's going to bleed to death. Okay, if that doesn't work, I'm getting dynamite. I don't get the dynamite. That Why? Bad thing. And I can use a gun, too, if he comes after me. But like the other guy said, if he turns around and he tries to walk away and I shoot him in the back and hurt him, I won't have a house anymore. Uh, you won't have a house, you'll probably end up in prison. And On this amitripling, if I do get a gun, I'll probably hit, so, kill somebody or kill myself. Oh, I don't yeah. know, and that's why I don't want to. Okay. You don't have a camera? Have a, some other type of camera to take photos? Well, that's what I'm going to do, you know. I can buy those cheap ones, you know. That, you Are know. you a cell phone? Yeah, I don't have a cell phone to see that. Are you guys going to work night shifts at all, or can you tell somebody? We will. I'll, I'll let all the night shift guys know. Yeah. All right? Okay. That way sure, we can get all taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. I personally deal with him a couple of times, and he keeps saying the same thing. Somebody comes and steals his wood, when in reality, it's not happening. He's just being delusional. Most of these people, when they get guns, they're okay. But the law doesn't require for anyone to take a, a psychological evaluation, unless it is very obvious. Quick story to go with the next. Every day, 32 people die from gunshot wounds in the United States. That's 12,000 deaths per year, staggering figures. But the right to bear arms here is considered sacred. No candidate can call for more gun control without sparking an outcry. That is why after the recent killings in a Sikh temple and in a Colorado movie theater, Obama sought consensus with Republicans, but without much success. Anytime where something like this happens, where there's a lot of multiple victims, uh, yeah, there's going to create some kind of a paranoia, you know. And, and trauma, yeah, it's gonna affect a lot of people. I don't know how long this is gonna be going on, but again, it becomes an issue of who is allowed to have guns. And who do you usually vote for? <laughs> well, we get a little bit personal with that. <laughs> I just, I just believe that the country can can be doing better, much better. Laredo, in the Texas wild frontier. Just on the other side of the border is Mexico. Despite the difficulty in obtaining visas, 100,000 Mexicans legally enter every day to get to work safely in the United States. And every day, 1,500 illegals are arrested and sent back home. In 20 years, 10,000 illegal migrants have died of thirst or drowning while trying to cross the border. Below the bridge that connects the two banks of the Rio Grande on the U.S. side, demonstrators express their anger. This is a caravan for peace, a small traveling troop composed of citizens from both countries. On the other side of the river, on the Mexican side this time, 20 protesters are doing the exact same thing. 
And so a long distance dialogue follows. Está violando permanentemente los derechos que permite la venta de armas. ¿Cómo se le puede llamar el, el primer mundo a un país que no ofrece una reforma migratoria justa? ¿Qué queremos, compañeros? Justicia. ¿Qué queremos? Justicia. Ever since the United States decided to conduct a war against drug traffickers on the Mexican side, the cartels have multiplied their number of murders and kidnappings. So to alert the American public. Relatives of the victims today join this caravan for peace. For these loved ones, the United States is just as responsible as Mexico for this situation. It is normal for America to protect its borders, but not like this, please. Arms sales to Mexico have fallen into the hands of organized crime, which has implemented a system of kidnapping and human trafficking. They kidnap women for human trafficking. Listen to us, please help us. Mexican poet Javier Cecilia is the figurehead of this peaceful movement. Last year, his son was kidnapped and tortured by the drug cartels. He died in agony. Ever since, Javier Cecilia has become more and more active from this side of the border, convinced that the solution can only come from here. Obama, escucha! Estamos en la lucha! Why are we addressing Obama? Because he did not end the war against the drug cartels. Because he has done nothing to prevent these weapons from reaching us. These weapons that criminals are using to kill us, it all comes from over here. The United States has the largest market for drugs. And to curb it, they've thrown us into a war in Mexico. And in the process, brought over a lot of weapons. The United States bears a great responsibility for this. It's true Obama failed to reform immigration laws during his first term. But can we hold him responsible for the indiscriminate violence raging across the border? One thing is certain. It is on this side of the border in any case, in the United States, where the relatives of the victims can expect to have their voices heard. A few kilometers away, the Callahan Ranch, a huge family estate run by one woman, Anna Maria Finley. family's been here 92 years because I'm the third generation that's here it's difficult you know it's you give a lot of yourself to the place and it's, it's not just it's not just a ranch it becomes part of your blood Anna Maria's ranch is so vast that all illegal immigrants in the region are forced to cross here so here, the police constantly patrol the area and migrants walk day and night to avoid detection. They used to be out there all the time. I cannot tell you how many times. It was midnight, I was closing things up at my mom's house, going back over to my house, and there's somebody at the door. And they're looking for food. Whenever somebody shows up at the door, you feed them. You, you take care of them. Now, have I called the border patrol to come pick them up sometimes? On a rare occasion, yes, because because I got a feeling from them or I saw the tattoos, the gang tattoos, things like that. And, um, you know, they may not do something to you, but you don't know what they're going to do once they get further up the road. Anna Maria has managed to adapt to this situation. 
employing a workforce of cheap Mexican labor. Through a government program, employees receive a temporary visa. It allows them to come and work legally in the United States for several weeks, and then once the work has been completed, they return to their families in Mexico. A few weeks ago, Barack Obama bypassed the Republicans, declaring that his administration will spare many young illegal immigrants deportation. But when we mention the president's name, Anna Maria speaks out. The polling numbers are almost even. That, um, that says that there are both sides, yet you're only hearing one side of the story. You're only hearing the Obama side of the story. I, I just find that disturbing, that that's the way it is. And, and yes, you have got two polar opposite views of what this country is about and what this country should become. That's an issue. Well, the government is insanely large in the first place. The government doesn't create jobs. The government creates positions for people to fill. They don't produce a product that is sold. They don't, the only income that they have is taxes. So I guess you're not voting for Obama. No. a big spending liberal and he takes his political inspiration from the socialist democrats in europe guess what europe isn't working in europe it's not going to work here i believe in america i believe in free enterprise and capitalism i believe government is too big i spend my life in the private sector not in government i'm a business guy i'm going to get america working again because i believe in the principles that make america the hope of the earth thank you Austin, 6th Street. This is one of the most festive and liveliest areas in Texas. An outlet in a state where religion is everywhere. Then again, even here there is always a good Samaritan around to save the sinners. You're going to find that there's going to be evil has found a way into somebody and they don't want it there. We've literally just been standing there on the street corner and somebody comes up and grabs our hand and says, would you pray for us? You know, so there's a lot of people on there that need a lot of help. They need a lot of love. And that's what we're here is just giving some Jesus love. We're not, we're not here being, there's no condemnation. You know, Jesus liked to drink wine too, so it was okay. You know, they just didn't get stumbling down drunk that often. They kind of, uh, so. we're not sitting here going, oh, look, here's a bunch of people sinning. We're looking around going, here's a bunch of people that Jesus loves. Uh, he died for them too, so we'll just be here if they, if anything that we can do for them, we're happy to. Most people just need to know that somebody cares. What we want them to understand is not only do we care, but Jesus cares. Jesus, we believe that the prayers and the seeds that were sown tonight are going to produce a mighty harvest here on 6th Street, God. by Billy Cunningham, the great American, and uh, and I think Obama used the hurricane machine to trash America for the past four years, and now the hurricane machine is heading toward Romney. Romney has accomplished so much in his life that in order to make him unacceptable, 
Obama and his uh, stooges in the mainstream media have got to smear the guy so nobody will accept what he has to say. Today at 12.07 on News Radio 700 WLW. Bill Cunningham, you guessed it, is a pure conservative thoroughbred. Host of a popular political show in the state of Ohio, he is best known for his sharp tongue against Obama. No wonder he does everything possible to help Romney. See, a rich guy like Romney makes everybody around him better. When wealthy individuals spend money, they create thousands of middle-class jobs. When uh, a yacht is purchased or a private plane, thousands and thousands of middle-class jobs built that yacht or they built that plane or they built that home. When high-income Americans spend money, they drop over the whole world seeds of economic growth that sprout out all over the planet. The way to destroy that is to take it away from the achievers and the doers, their personal property, and give it to individuals who not only don't deserve it, but didn't earn it. Because the philosophy is, guess what? The philosophy is, well, the person is rich because somebody else is poor and they stole it from them. Man, that philosophy is a failure. It has failed all over the world. It's failing in Greece. It's failing in Spain. It's failing in France. And if we continue to do it, damn it, we're going to look like the French. Let's continue with more. Billy Cunningham, the great American, live every day at the home of your Reds, News Radio 700, WLW. The sales event is going on now. Pisses me off. But ultimately, we're going to get the government we deserve. And I think to an extent, God sent Obama here to punish us, much like Holland in France was sent there to punish the French. Once his radio show is finished, Bill takes us into another room to show us the beginning of his TV talk show. Hearing someone nag at you all day, every day, just like that. Difficult to avoid Cunningham, influential media personality who never misses a chance to bring up Obama. Please welcome Portia and Carlise. Imagine going to Indonesia in 1965, and there in the, in the back of a first grade classroom in Jakarta, Indonesia, is a little black boy. And you looked around that room and said, you know what, that kid is going to be the president of the United States of America. Who would have believed it? But that's what happened. And that kid who spent high school on drugs, marijuana, cocaine, terrible grades, that kid is the president of the United States and the leader of the free world. That says a lot about us. That's beautiful. I just wish he was a conservative and not a liberal because he's, he's going to do for this country terrible, and he has done terrible things. Well, uh, the world would be in better shape if America was more in charge because, you know, we're, we're the greatest country in the world by far. When somebody walks on the moon, it's an American. When cancer is cured, it's an American. When uh, we're the largest economy in the world, and uh, we create most of the things in the world. And yeah, Amer world. But America keeps doing this every few years and generation because we're looking more like Europe. We keep doing this. Over the last 32 years, we have tens of millions of Americans getting checks from the government, and they want to make sure those checks keep coming on time. And that's why Obama is probably going to get reelected unless Americans come to our collective senses. Then a young girl who needs to grow up. To shut the hell up. Like a In American history, no Republican has ever won the presidency without winning the state of Ohio. Never happened. If Romney doesn't win this county, Butler, Claremont, and Warren County. He does not win Ohio, and he can't win the presidency. So these four counties are going to elect the next president. And I'm the guy they've been listening to for 30 years. It's me. And I got 200,000 people that listen to me in these four counties every day. Whether you like him or not, it must be said that Bill Cunningham is right about one thing. Whoever wins Ohio will most likely win the White House. That is why Obama and Romney did not skimp on spending in this state. But for now, fate has been reluctant to choose sides.